Hello everyone. Today we're tackling a critical aspect of building robust web services, rate limiting. In this episode, we're going to implement rate limiting using Golang, specifically leveraging the rate package. This package provides a simple, customizable and effective rate limiter to control the frequency of events, protecting your API from abuse and ensuring fair resource allocation. This is the rate package, which is part of the extended Go libraries. As you can see, it provides tools to work with rate limiters based on the token bucket algorithm. We'll be focusing on using the limiter type and its associated functions. Don't worry if you aren't familiar with token bucket right now, we will show how to set up the limiter, and it will just work. Let's start by looking at the initial HTTP setup that we have done so far. Here I have the setup for the initial HTTP server. We're using the standard net HTTP package. In the main function, we create a new mux using HTTP.NewServeMux. This acts as a request router. Then, we register the greet handler for the root endpoint. Finally, we start the HTTP server on port 8080 using HTTP.ListenAndServe. If the server fails to start, we log the error and exit. Let us look at Greet Handler. This responds with the Hello World message in a JSON format. We will implement a middleware that will provide rate limiting feature based on the IP addresses from which we receive requests. Before we write code for the middleware, let's install the rate package using this command in the terminal. Make sure you're in the project's root directory. OK, so now we get to the meat of this video. Our goal is to create a rate limiter that will sit in front of the greet handler or any API handler. Now let's create a middleware function to handle the rate limiting. The middleware will accept the next handler in the chain. A rate limit that represents the number of requests allowed per second. And a burst value. This determines the maximum number of events that can happen at once. It returns an HTTP handler that wraps the rate limiting logic. Let's add the middleware to all the APIs the server can serve. We will create a new handler that wraps our MUX router with the rate limiter middleware. Let's put the rate limit as two requests per second. And burst as 10 requests at once before limiting kicks in. To make use of the new handler, we will replace MUX in listen and serve. Let's get back to the middleware implementation. Since we want to limit requests per IP, we will maintain a map IP limiter map to store rate limiters for each unique IP address. It is a map of the IP address to the rate limiter. Here, we need to get the IP address from the request. For this purpose, we have created this helper function getIP that extracts the client's IP address from the request. Here, we use split host port on the remote address to split the host and port. If there's an error, we log it and return an empty string. Otherwise, we return the extracted IP address. Now in the middleware, we get the client's IP address using get IP. We pass the HTTP request to this function. Next, we are going to create a limiter for the IP if it does not exist. First, we check if a rate limiter exists for this IP in the map IP limiter map. If not, we create a new rate limiter with the provided rate limit and burst size.
We then store it in IP limiter map. Now comes the rate limiting logic. We check if the limiter allows the request using limiter.allow. If the limit is exceeded, we return a 429, too many request response in JSON format. Finally, if the request is allowed, we call next.serve HTTP to forward the request to the actual handler. And we're done with the middleware. Before we run this server, let's look at the client we are going to use to test. We will be sending 50 requests at an interval of 100 milliseconds. Here, we print the status code of each request. Let's run the server first. Now we will run the client. Here, we can see requests are being rejected after about 12 requests when the limit is crossed. In this video, we learned how to implement a simple but effective rate limiter using the rate package. While this implementation provides a starting point, remember that production-ready rate limiting might involve more complex logic, such as distributing limiters across multiple servers or integrating with dedicated rate limiting services. Thanks for watching and happy coding.